Hello you two do. So today we're going to look at this uh, oscilloscope I bought. Obviously used because this is uh, uh, early 1980s vintage. Uh, it's a, let's see if we can get that on camera. It's a Farnell oscilloscope DTV 1214. So this is an analog scope. It's got two channels, um, all your various uh, adjustments you would expect for an analog scope, um, and it's got a U it's got a UK plug, so it runs on 220 to 240 volts, roughly. Can have a look at the back here to see. Uh, don't know how well this show up. Um, we've got some C mod adjustments down below, at the bottom here. Uh, trace rotates, astigmatism. I have no idea what that is. A fuse, and as we see here, maximum power. Uh, 60 volt amps, uh, 220, 240, input set for 240, nominal 50, 60 hertz, and channel 1 and channel 2 bandwidth 12 megahertz. I think there's also a 14 megahertz version of this, hence the DT1214, uh, but this seems to be the 12 uh, megahertz model. Now I haven't actually powered this on, it should be working, uh, at least that was what the listing said, but if I try to pick it up here, see if I can do this in a way where you can listen to it. Yeah, you heard that. There's something rattling around inside of it. <laughs> and. It sounds like it may be metallic, so I really don't dare turn this on until we've done a teardown and figured out what the hell that is. Um, well, anything else to say on the outset before it turned down? Well, um, it's a little bit rough here. I, I like the aesthetic of this. This is really the main th uh, reason why I bought it, just for it to look cool. Uh, the front here is actually a bit beat up. There's supposed to be a black plastic trim piece around the, the edge here that's missing and you can see this outer casing here is a bit rough uh, it's got a few things but like I said it, uh, oh yeah it's missing a button here but that's a standard probably six millimeter pin or something so that should be easy to find a replacement or 3d print or whatever so uh, let's have a look and it looks like we need some Phillips to get the outer layer off. I actually had the outer layer off, but I have to disassemble it even more to get to the piece that's running around. So that's why I still haven't done it completely. Well, let's see what pH2 may. Yeah, that seems. That seems to work. So Phillips head loaded up. And I'll probably speed this part up. And here we go. Oh, I've got one more. There's a grounding lead hooked into the handle here. I need to remove that. Uh, I sh really should. It's beneath the handle, and that's really in an annoying spot. Let's just see if we can't get away with not removing it. Uh, it's hooked in down here. Then we've got the handle, but this seems like the screw is actually behind the handle. So I need to remove the handle, both screws, then this, and I would like to avoid that, although it might be kind of hard. 
to do. Um, but let's have a look inside here. So, obviously we got the CRT tube over here. Um, and down here, that's the Wolves divider in this box. Not sure why this is in a box like this. Does it uh, actually when it's connected to the Wolves per division? So I guess maybe it actually transformed the voltage for the display. Maybe um, since it needs such a big box, we got this kind of uh, sort of a daughter board. Actually, this looks a bit crusty. I don't know. Well, let's see if I can get some better lights on that. We can zoom in on these potentiometers down here. Yeah, you see that potentiometer there, for instance. That looks uh, kind of weird. Almost like it's disintegrating. It's got some sort of weird stuff on the outside. And there's more that looks kind of the same. Uh, but we'll... I might want to go in and clean that up. It looks like it's all the potentiometers, so... I'm not sure what's up with that. Um, there's a lot of adjustments for, for various stuff. And if we look... Uh, and actually on the, on the bottom I didn't show, there's a sticker that says this tested good in... I think it was 2006 or 2008. Um, yeah, and we've got the big voltage transformer over here, supplying the whole thing with power. Um, we try to go around the back. I mean, most of the stuff back here looks like it's... Uh, well, actually the CRT connects up here, so that's... This board probably drives the CRT. Um, or this part of the board. Maybe scope main board. It says on this. Kind of hard to tell, and it's kind of hard to get a good angle on this. Let's see if we can get some more lights down here. Um, I don't really know <laughs> what I'm looking at. Looking at for for the most part. There's some adjustments, some various stuff that's uh, labeled. Got a bunch of. Uh, MOSFETs or something on the back, at least they're heat sinks, so they must be pushing quite a lot of power way down here. Uh, and of course, as always, when you're dealing with a tube like this, you should be wary of a charge. Now this has been unplugged for like a long time, and I'm gonna just try yeah, pushing the power button and stuff doesn't do anything, so I think this is very safe to touch, but be wary of. So I'm thinking we may need to remove the front here to see if there's anything hidden behind here that would allow us access. If there's even a... Um, yeah, I don't know. What if we look from the bottom? Is there anything? What is this? This panel here might... Uh, let's see. There's screws here, so this panel might actually just come off, which would probably make this a whole lot easier. So uh, let's try removing that. Kind of resting on it. Now this has got. Oh, here it is. Now there was another grounding plane here, <laughs> a grounding uh, connection. So I can't pull this too tight. I'll see if I can get an angle on it afterwards. Uh, but this was what was rattling around. It's got like a red something on it, and then it kind I don't know if it will show up on camera, but it kind of seems like and feels like there's glue here. So this must have been glued onto something um, in here. I'm not quite sure what that would be, though. Um, yeah, I have no idea why, what that would be glued onto. 
Uh, I'll just try and see if we can get that out of the way so we can get the money shot from beneath here. Well, it's not much of a money shot to be honest because there isn't any chips or capacitors or anything. There's a few daughter boards here. Uh, this first one switches, controls the switching between AC and DC. Oh, actually, yeah, that's part of it. But that's also channel 1. And then channel 2 is this box up here. And that's uh, also got the AC and DC switches. So you can run AC on one channel and DC on the other if you want to. Which is nice, I guess. Um, these goes to some of the adjustments on the back, which I think was for the CIT. Um, yeah. So there we pretty much have it. Now we just need to put it back together and I need to put on a Euro clock so I can get some power to it and then we'll see if it actually works. Now if you want to see like nice uh, you know, traces and stuff on the display, then, well, I have to disappoint you because I don't know where my probes is for this. I didn't get any probes with it, so I bought some on eBay and they are in a, hidden away in a box somewhere. I don't know where right now, so we'll just see if it turns on and if we get a straight uh, trace across uh, the screen. And then we'll assume it probably works. The moment of truth. Power on the power strip. And... Oh, god damn. <laughs> We've got power. I don't actually see anything on the screen. Oh, it just needs to heat up a little bit. And ain't that a beauty. Now, like I said, I can't really do much testing right here, other than we can just... Oh, that's a bit scratchy. So... Let's see, that's... Oh, so that's actually... Channel 1 all the way down there, apparently. Yeah, let me too. That's actually kind of weird because that appears to be channel one. Oh, okay. You can just do it like that. Okay, so channel one, channel two. Uh, like we saw, it was, uh, it's a little bit scratchy uh, when you do the fine adjustments. So I'll probably want to get in there with some contact cleaner and full intensity so it's, it's not actually reasonably bright even on like 50% intensity. That's nice. Focus works. That maybe works. We don't have a trace so we can't really tell. X5 button. Oh. Yeah, so we can tell. Uh, see, we've got some triggers. Oh, we can't use those right now. We can invert the channel. And do some channel 1 plus channel 2. So that actually adds them together. I'm not sure what that actually does. Would that mean you could effectively measure a tristar bandwidth or something? Or what would be the idea be of that? I'm not sure. Anyways, it seems to be working, so <laughs> I'm quite happy with uh, that purchase. I'll probably get in be behind these contacts and uh, clean them all with some uh, some contact cleaner to get rid of some of the uh, scratching that there is on some of them. You see, we get kind of a little bit of a ghost trace <laughs> when we touch that and maybe 3D print a replacement a plastic trim piece around the uh, edge here just to because right now this is actually kind of floating in the breeze this uh, front panel it should be held on by that it's now it's only held on by these buttons here obviously I need to replace this button up here um, 
But yeah, I'm happy with that purchase. Um, and you'll probably see me using it in some future video. Uh, so that's all for now guys. Uh, if you liked the video, press the like button. And remember to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Uh, so you don't miss any future content. And also next time, take care.